so this is the big breaking story that we're tracking. It is a huge judgment just delivered by the Supreme Court in election year. The Supreme Court has in fact struck down the electoral bonds. The Supreme Court has come and said that bonds are not the only way to curb black money and that electoral bonds are in fact violative of section 191 a of the constitution which guarantees the free speech and fundamental rights so it is a huge judgment that has been delivered the supreme court has directed that the issuing bank shall stop the issue of electoral bonds immediately and the state bank of india has to furnish details of donations through electoral bonds and the details of political parties which are receiving Judge these contributions. Not the Justice. Which I should. Oh, I have also applied the proportionality standards, but with slightly different variation. My conclusions are the same. Uh, it's written in a way that the comp subject is complex and judicial review is always legalistic, but I've tried to simplify it. Grateful to the Sir. Grateful to the court. Very salutary judgment for Lord, which will have a very significant impact on our quality, on our electoral we, 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 we appreciate my That is outside now. Outside, Lord. No, no, no. Press. no, no, no. The I, photographers I are outside. This. You are saying this at the wrong place. I'm not going to say this. Oblige. All right, uh, the Supreme Court there holding the electoral bond scheme as violative of Section 191A. They have struck down the electoral bond scheme and declared it unconstitutional. The Supreme Court says that the bond scheme has to be struck down immediately and it has been declared unconstitutional. It's a huge verdict that has been delivered by the Supreme Court in election year. Supreme Court says it has delivered a unanimous verdict on a batch of pleas, remember, that had challenged the legal validity of the central government's electoral bond scheme, which had allowed for anonymity in political funding. So there will be no more anonymity as far as political funding is concerned. All of these details have to be made public. Mohammad Amin, former Joint Director of the Election Commission of India, joins us on the broadcast for a quick comment on this. Thanks very much. Your first reactions to what the court has just said. I can welcome the decision of the CGI and uh, this is very good. Actually, I'm going to mention the name of our former Chief Election Commissioner, Dr. S.Y. Qureshi, who has submitted so many things to amend the uh, and control by the Election Commission of India through the law ministry to the parliament for amendments. But this was come in, in force in 2018 and 19 for the corrupt practices uh, done by the parties and we can control the uh, funding of the political parties and the practice of the uh, illegal practices at the time of the election uh, process. Uh, election was going on at that time. So many we have uh, 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 collected a lot of money at the time as the news, you know, you are the well judge. At the time of the all elections, we uh, we, we locate a lot of the money from other ins and different type of practice they are using. So that's why they want to stop. But the government has tried at that time, this government, to uh, curb the uh, things. But uh, what happened? This decision has come uh, by the uh, uh, CGI. So, election commission has no power to do anything after the parliament uh, can do and after the CGI has done it, their verdict. So, this is good for the uh, election commission of India. So many parties and so many people are always defaming that their uh, election commission is going to be the favor of any party. So, this is very clear now. And you can see they have given the timeline also, 6 March 24. Right. The three weeks they have to submit by the SBI. Yes. Before that, there was no provision. So, the uh, people of RTI Act, this is 19A ruling. So, this is the, they have to disclose everything. And this is, they have right. to do in the, on the website also. Sir, so I'm going to uh, interrupt you for just a moment because my colleague Sunil Prabhu, who was inside the court as this verdict was delivered, is now joining us live from the Supreme Court. Sunil, over to you. Break down the key aspects of this judgment. It is a significant judgment that's coming in weeks away from the elections. 
That's uh, right. It's a significant ju uh, judgment and it has been asked, uh, and has asked State Bank of India, which was the nodal agency, to immediately stop the electoral bond scheme. Immediately disclose all the names, give it to the Election Commission, and it should be now published by the 31st of March. Uh, that is the clear indication. So ahead of 2024, the thousands of crores that were collected will now be an open book for everybody to scrutinize and see in terms of who and wh uh, how uh, did they fund, whether there has been a quid pro quo. Uh, that is a clear process that is now going to take place uh, in the election uh, electoral bond scheme. Uh, they have found it violative of the right to uh, information on the Companies Act, on the Income Tax Act, on various grounds. They have found it fundamentally. It's a unanimous judgment. And, uh, of course, uh, the other aspect is uh, that uh, uh, there could be, uh, 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 you know, the conclusions are the same as Justice Sanjeev Khanna, who gave a differing uh, in terms of reasoning, but has agreed uh, with the uh, other, uh, uh, other judges, uh, fellow judges, on the conclusion. So, uh, in, in the electoral bond scheme, which came up in the, as a money bill in the 2017, which is also subject to now a constitutional question about money bills, uh, can, they, you know, can you uh, introduce it uh, in the uh, 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 Lok Sabha, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, which are not necessarily money bills? Uh, and, uh, you know, that is the Aadhaar Act, uh, which will also be subject to a constitutional court at a later stage. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, today uh, this ensures uh, what was really happening. The ruling party was getting nearly 95% of the electoral bonds. That is now not going to happen. Uh, that will, uh, they have found it as a violative uh, of the uh, 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 and unconstitutional. And it's on that basis now uh, that they will have to play and go forward on this very important aspect. So it's a big blow uh, for the government uh, of the day. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, holding it unconstitutional, the Chief Justice of India, yes. in his judgment, majority judgment, uh, gave that they, you know the government and the union wasn't able uh, to uh, give uh, and reason out uh, what exactly uh, is uh, the uh, you know uh, why uh, the scheme had come about and uh, you know why it, yes. it followed uh, the principles of uh, you know whether the it was really anonymous or not, uh, and the last aspect. Uh, which I want to point out, uh, as uh, you know, Prashant Bhushan and others said in the court, uh, that this will have uh, far-reaching implications because a free and fair election yes. is extremely critical because money power plays a critical role. Now it is not going to be uh, towards any a particular party. It's going yes. to be uh, open. This is something Sunil, that opposition parties had opposed. They were the petitioners in this case and they had oppo opposed this. Yes, it was an opposition versus government fight. It was always pitted that way. The, uh, the petitioners had even argued that this leads to undue advantage to the ruling government of the day, which is why, uh, you know, the government was so for... Uh, the electoral bond scheme. But the politics of it aside, Sunil, just for a moment, for the benefit of our viewers, can you break down what this means? What were the electoral bonds? Now, now we can use them in the past tense. Uh, how did they guarantee opacity in the political funding process? And how does this verdict, many would tout it as historic, in fact, lead to more transparency in political funding? Break down the details of this case for the benefit of our viewers, please. So I'll put it very simply, Rishika. If you wanted to, uh, you know, give a particular particular party, uh, say, thousand rupees or two thousand rupees, you were permitted to do so. All you had to do was go to the State Bank of India and buy an electoral bond and give it to the political party. You would have been anonymous. Only the State Bank of India would know. What was argued was that the State Bank of India, even though it is technically anonymous, the the ruling party knows who has bought it because it is in designated State Bank of India branches across the country and they were able to issue the electoral bond. So you can easily find out the source of it. That thousand rupees, if you had given, say, to A particular party or B party or C party, that party would take it and then encash it to use it as uh, and, and, and file it in their returns and go ahead with the entire process. It, they didn't need to, you know, uh, state it. There was a certain amount of opacity with that. But then there was a three judge bench which said, no, you have to disclose it to the election commission. Now, today, what the Supreme Court has said, those thousands of crores that you have collected in the last few years must now be disclosed by the State Bank of India uh, to the Election Commission and the Election Commission 
by the 31st of March has to publish this entire process. And I must add here that the election commission itself, and it's, uh, 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 not the present team, the earlier team, had consistently been opposed to the electoral bond scheme. Uh, so even the empire in this stage was not extremely convinced with the government scheme in terms of bringing uh, what was called transparency and accountability. Now that, as you said, it's in the past tense, it's unconstitutional. The State Bank of India has been asked immediately to stop yes. the entire scheme and go ahead uh, and uh, disclose the names of all those people who have given thousands of crores to all political parties, be it A particular party or B particular party, everybody will now be disclosed in the account of transparency. It will be timed along with Indian elections. Uh, by then, uh, the, uh, you know, it will be just a few days ahead yes. of the first phase of voting. There is expected to be a seventh phase or sixth phase, uh, whichever the election commission decides uh, uh, when that announcement is made uh, by the first week of March, if right. not earlier. And then, of course, it starts uh, from April, which will carry on till May uh, right. over a seven-phase seven so, uh, process over one and a half months. So, Neil, if I understand you correctly, and again, this is a point of clarification, not just has the electoral bond scheme been struck down as unconstitutional, which means that the scheme is to be stopped immediately, all past political funding that has been received by political parties also now needs to be brought out in the public domain. So donors who have previously anonymously donated towards That's political right. parties, their contributions will also be made public. Is that correct? That's right. It will be made public in the interest of a free and fair election in terms of transparency and accountability because it was violative of the RTI. Now it will be published by the uh, election commission once the State Bank of India uh, will give uh, those details uh, to the election commission so that will be the election commission will be the nodal agency uh, to publish it uh, by the 31st of march 2024 all right uh, this is of course you know like sunil has been saying this is a huge step towards transparency in political funding uh, this was also remembered in the larger context a battle that was pitted between uh, the opposition and the ruling dispensation. Sunil, do stay on with us because we have the former joint director of the Election Commission of India also with us uh, for a comment. Mohamed Amin, uh, you know, based on the details that Sunil has just shared with us, I mean, this is going to be huge uh, ahead of the elections. The fact that all of the political funding that has been received by various political parties under the electoral bond scheme not just has been stopped, but with retrospective effect, all of that has to be made public. First of all, I'm going to tell you the election commission always believe in fair and fair, uh, free and fair election in the country always. And he do justice for all parties. And this, uh, you know, this time actually the petition was done by the NGOs and parties and ADR also want the clarification, like the legal validity of the electoral bonds and the alternative system of uh, funding of the parties and the political parties are not agree on that current system so that's why we can welcome the order of the cgi cgi has given the free hand and everything is collected by the election commission of india so he is believe on the election commission so that's why they are given the right to the to collect the all information from the state bank of india yes. and they publish their own site and right. this will be very good for as per okay, the so you're, RTI Act. You're, you're, the pretty unequo know. you're pretty unequivocally welcoming this judgment and expected life. Yeah. But I want to also yeah, ask Sunil, is. yes, I also want to ask Sunil, Sunil, there were very interesting things that were said uh, uh, in the court while uh, uh, Chief Justice of India was in fact reading out that unanimous verdict that, uh, you know, the, the, the government had argued that this is, in fact, something that will lead to ensuring that, you know, political donations are done through banking channels, that, you know, parties' accounts can be audited, etc. The, the, the other side had, however, claimed that, you know, it could be used to launder money into the political system. So, a lot was actually said about black money in this judgment. Can you break that down for us? Well, so, you know, the basically on the Income Tax Act, they said that even if you did, 
uh, are you making you know the threshold why this is geared towards corporates what happens to that you know small uh, student or a, a person like you or me or a middle class person who wanted to contribute it could not be just geared up towards any a particular party why is it was a, a you know in, in fact for under the companies act anybody above uh, 7.5% so all those points had to be seen and the question of quid pro quo you know whether this uh, you know when you give there is that always that understanding that they will be a, a taking so we'll know actually once those uh, figures are disclosed uh, by uh, you know uh, the state bank of indian election commission uh, in terms of transparency uh, if it actually comes out uh, on uh, you know a, 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 in the public air uh, which political party which corporate uh, you know gave the money and whether there was a quid pro quo you can correlate it in terms of government contracts in terms of policies that have been done uh, that will be a clear indicator so definitely a lot has to be said and lot has to be done in this aspect the supreme court will have to wait for that full judgment the chief justice of india in his reasoning uh, but uh, gave his uh, conclusions as well as uh, some parts of it but uh, on all counts be it the right to information be it the companies act uh, be it the income tax act Uh, and uh, various other uh, 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 you know uh, schemes that had been linked to this entire electoral bond uh, they have found it unconstitutional ultra violence struck down immediately asking state bank of india to stop this entire process uh, and no more accepting electoral bonds and giving them an ultimatum uh, to uh, disclose this to the election commission and the election commission who is expected to be the free and fair empire must publish it by the 31st of march 2024 ahead of general elections which will take place in the next few months well absolutely sunil the timing of this judgment is crucial uh, as well and you know you've been breaking down what all has been said by the supreme court while it strikes down electoral bonds with immediate effect saying that it is violative of uh, the companies act of rti of 191a and also uh, you know in a certain sense uh, it is undue advantage to the ruling dispensation this is something that we've been talking about sy kureshi also joins us on the broadcast he needs no introduction former cec thanks very much sir for being with us your quick reaction on uh, the judgment that's just been delivered by the supreme court i'm absolutely delighted and excited because every word of what we have been saying through our article through uh, various uh, media interventions and uh, the uh, the lawyers who are arguing in the court everything seems to have been upheld uh, the i was hearing uh, the, the later part of the judgment uh, the operative part and uh, every word with the chief justice said was music to my ears whatever was our stand has been upheld in every clause that has been referred to has been uh, addressed and we look forward to the detailed judgment i'm absolutely delighted it is uh, the great day for india's democracy uh, you know a lot has been said about the scheme and now is you know we have we, as we have more clarity emerging we know that not just has the scheme been stopped but all contributions so far that have been made under the electoral bond scheme have to also be made public how do you see this impacting the electoral process going forward sir yeah in fact you know the, the government would have got away rather easily if they had listened to an advice which you were all making that even if you just Uh, make the donors and donee public that's all there is no problem with the scheme uh, continue with your electoral bond but so long as the uh, people know who which power which company has donated how much money to whom so that we can know the uh, quid pro quo if that was done perhaps the problem would have been solved now the court has gone much beyond that and uh, the fact that it is asking for the refund uh, the reversing the entire process by 3 years it is a really the remarkable and bold judgment which should be held by every the democracy loving indian big big impact in the upcoming polls given the fact that uh, this is happening just week uh, weeks ahead of the judgment like my colleague sunil prabhu was breaking it down for us it is in a certain sense a huge setback for the ruling dispensation which it vehemently argued for the continuance of the scheme yeah i would would not like to make a political uh, comment at the timing of course the timing is extremely uh, important but every concern of uh, the people who were uh, making uh, uh, this an issue and raising uh, making noise about it has been addressed and in detail and in fact uh, uh, plus 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 
So I, we couldn't have asked for more. It's, a, it's really a, a fantastic day. Struck down the electoral bond scheme, comprehensively struck it down, and all the provisions that were made to bring it into effect in the Income Tax Act, in the Companies Act, etc. Everything has been struck down. They have held that this violates the fundamental right to information of citizens to know about uh, who is contributing uh, this much uh, money to political parties, etc. They have also struck down the amendment made which allowed unlimited con political contribution uh, being made by companies to political parties. So, uh, not only the electoral bond scheme, but also the amendment which removed the restrictions on political contributions by companies, which were that you cannot contribute more than 7.5% of your annual profit by way of political contributions. That has also been struck down as uh, violating the level playing field in a democracy. So uh, the, the, the petitions filed by us have been comprehensively allowed by the Supreme Court. So the, so the, the, the assertion of the government was... What will happen to those? Hmm. So they have also directed the State Bank of India to furnish complete information about who purchased the bonds, who encashed the bonds. And all this information will have to be submitted to the Election Commission who will have to display it on a public website so that the people come to know who purchased the bonds and who contributed by way of electoral bonds to these to which political party. So, so, Hindi so, so, any any amount uh, specified by the government uh, uh, get uh, got no, by now the Hindi one more time. Look, today a very decision the Supreme Court has given, which will be a very long effect. हमारी पूरी चुनावी लोकतंत्र के ऊपर उन्होंने ये इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड की स्कीम कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली स्ट्राइक डाउन कर दी है ये कहते हुए कि इसमें जो एनोनिमस एलिमेंट इन्होंने लाया कि भाई किसी को पता नहीं लगे कि भाई ये इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड किसने खरीदे और किसको दिए ये बिल्कुल हमारे जनता के सूचना के अधिकार के खिलाफ है जो कि एक मौलिक अधिकार है जनता का All right, uh, Sunil Prabhu is also with us on the broadcast. Sunil, I have you have a, a question. question for... Yeah, I have a question for the former Chief Election Commissioner, Mr. Qureshi. Sir, the Election Commission itself had its own misgivings on the electoral bond scheme to the government when it was, uh, you know, uh, going ahead with that decision. It would be great to explain to the viewers what were the Election Commission's, uh, you know, viewpoint and why were they opposed to the entire electoral bond scheme at that stage? Yeah, Election Commission had uh, written a very strong uh, representation to the government and had called it a retrograde uh, step and uh, uh, it uh, had said it had uh, killed transparency. So uh, they had uh, used the strongest possible word to reject the scheme and uh, later on the Reserve Bank of India used the similar language. But uh, sadly and unfortunately later on, both these organizations changed their statement in the court and the court questioned them. Hey, look, this, uh, what you said earlier is totally different from what you are saying now. What led to the change of opinion was question. It, it uh, was very questionable to, for all of us. Uh, but I'm uh, glad that all those uh, issues uh, are now behind us. And election, uh, the uh, Supreme Court has taken care of every possible issue that uh, was raised from uh, time to time. We have uh, Professor Jagdeep Chokar. He's uh, the lead petitioner in this case uh, from ADR joining us. Thanks very much, Professor Jagdeep. Your first reaction to the verdict in the Supreme Court? Well, as Dr. Qureshi said, this is a very positive judgment, uh, very comprehensive. As far as uh, I heard from the Supreme Court, one will have to read the complete judgment to come to a total conclusion. But on the face of it, it is outstanding. It has, uh, in a way, renewed the faith of, I think, people, not only in the democracy, but also in the Supreme Court. Uh, let me also add that it has removed all the problems that the electoral bond scheme had created. The system before the electoral scheme was not ideal. 
and therefore all those problems remain but this new set of problems that had been created have been comprehensively removed and there is uh, based on what i heard it seems an outstanding judgment and the supreme court and the constitution bench need to be complemented uh, that's all i can say at the moment All right. Well, it is uh, a huge verdict by the Supreme Court delivered just weeks ahead of the election. The Supreme Court striking down the electoral bond scheme, going a step further, saying that all contributions that have been made under this scheme have to be made public. So it is not just. uh the uh the the political funds going forward that have been stopped under the scheme but will affect all of the funding that has been collected under the scheme sunil there's also a very interesting provision before we slip into a break on the refund process so apparently all funds that have been received under the scheme in the last 15 days can be refunded by respective political parties what more can you tell us about that So that's the scheme that uh, the uh, uh, Chief Justice of India gave. I, I also need to give a correction to our viewers. It's not March 31st, but March 13th. So it will be well ahead of the uh, day, uh, you know, uh, uh, the disclosure of uh, at least one month ahead, or at least uh, 20 days ahead of uh, uh, you know uh, elections being announced. Uh, the, uh, 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 you know, elections being underway because elections will be announced uh, hopefully by the first or second of uh, March, uh, or plus or minus four of, uh, days uh, and thereabouts. Uh, but uh, by March 13th, not 31st. they have to disclose uh, those names uh, and those who have already taken the money who have already gone ahead and contributed if they don't want to be uh, disclosed they can you know get that refund uh, but basically bring in transparency and accountability in the system as you heard uh, very clearly from the uh, uh, former chief election commissioner the differing positions of not only the election commission on the electoral bond scheme first opposing it saying retrograde as well as rbi and then subsequently both these constitutional bodies or statutory bodies uh, changing their position at a later stage so uh, that's something that uh, will now they will have to give an answer to uh, because ultimately uh, as we've seen uh, the constitutional bench a five judge bench has unanimously held it unconstitutional Welcome back you're watching NDTV 24/7 our breaking news coverage of the big verdict in the Supreme Court continues it is a huge verdict that the court has delivered just weeks ahead of the election where it has struck down electoral bonds um and said that these bonds shall stop immediately and all the political funding that has been received by various political parties under the electoral bonds which granted anonymity to the donor shall be made public by the state bank of india and on the election commission website uh, we have with us on the broadcast sunil prabhu he was inside the court while this verdict was being delivered and also professor jagdeep chokar he is from adr the lead petitioner in this case before i come to professor jagdeep uh, quickly uh, sunil to you you know this is like you said a largely a battle that was pitted against the ruling dispensation versus the opposition um make no mistake in 2018 the electoral bond scheme was essentially brought to give an alternative to cash donations um and it was made in order to bring some kind of an anonymity to the political donor what the government said uh, uh, sunil very interestingly in its arguments is that this will essentially lead to an official cha- uh, channel banking channel through which funding can be received as opposed to cash that's now been struck down uh it's a huge verdict that the court has delivered what are the grounds if you could break it down for the benefit of our viewers on the basis of which the electoral bond scheme has been struck down well actually i must uh, uh, you know it's it's because of it's an uneven ground it's not a free and fair the fact that it is you know uh, there is an undue advantage for the bjp in this particular case the ruling uh, dispensation why look at the data that you have got as per the election commission uh, statistics nearly 6000 in plus 6000 odd crores of rupees have been received by the bjp nearly 90 to 95% the rest to the opposition parties why is that is that only that people want to give only a particular party or not what is the reason behind this entire process all these things will now come once the election commission 
publishes that data and explains to them. So really, uh, kudos to the guest who's there, Mr. Jagdeep, who actually spearheaded this uh, uh, petition. This has been a long road for them uh, to, uh, you know, uh, 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 contest uh, 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 this argument on a constitutional court. And all five judges agree that we, be it the representation of people's act, be it the right to information, be it the companies act, be it the income tax act, it is violative. It is an uneven ground. As was pointed out earlier by the former chief election commissioner, Mr. Qureshi, the election commission had said it was a retrograde step. The RBI at that time had said this is not a correct scheme. It is not uh, uh, correctly favored. All of them, these constitutional bodies, suddenly at a later stage changed their position when the hearing was taking place. Hmm. Why did it happen? These are questions that the election commission as well as the RBI will have to answer. We can keep asking these questions but the truth as to answer your question is that there was an uneven ground. It was not a free and fair process yes. in ensuring that everybody is entitled to the funds. And it's in that backdrop that the Supreme Court today has held it unconstitutional, violative of the RTI, violative of the Companies Act, violative of the Representation of People's Act, violative of the Income Tax Act. It's a big no in terms of political funding. Whether it will actually help in bringing further transparency because the earlier system, as was pointed out, was far worse. It allowed money, it allowed cash to be given in, up to 20,000, no questions asked. A yes. whole lot of other issues were there. Uh, so it's in that, if you want to really cleanse India's electoral system, uh, the government of the day, uh, probably, uh, when the new government uh, comes into play, uh, will bring in a scheme in consultation uh, with the election commission, with political parties yes. and the RBI uh, to actually clean up this entire process. Uh, because as you know, money power plays a critical and most important role ahead of elections. If, uh, if one particular party has access to more money uh, than the other, uh, then you are not uh, definitely unable to really contest in yes. the true sense of the term. Well, absolutely. And those are things, uh, uh, you know, the larger ramifications and implications of this judgment, like Sudil and I have been pointing out since the very outset, the timing coming in just weeks before the general election is something that is very, very uh, hard to miss as far as this huge judgment is concerned. Uh, very quickly, I also want to get in a word from uh, Professor Chokar. You were the lead petitioner, sir, in this case. Um, you've, you've said in your opening comments that you're very happy uh, with what all has been said in the Supreme Court. But, you know, break it down for us. What were your biggest concerns when you petitioned the top court? And, uh, you know, in a certain sense, most of those have been addressed. Well, the, the biggest concern was that this scheme created a situation where the ruling party, regardless of whether the ruling party is the BJP or the Congress or the Trinamool Congress or the whichever party, the ruling party had a potential to get more and more money and to choke the flow of money to opposition parties. Now, this was true irrespective of who the ruling party is. Uh, let me add uh, that a couple of things uh, Sunil Prabhu has said are a little doubtful because he said it was only the BJP. Let me tell you, except the uh, CPM, no other party filed a petition. And therefore, it must be assumed that all political, all other political parties were... <coughs> not really, really against this scheme. Number two, Sunil also said that the earlier system was far worse. I respectfully disagree. The earlier system was bad and it continues to be bad. But electoral bond scheme made it worse. It is not that the system that we will now go back to was better or it was a bad system but if you compare it to electoral bonds electoral bonds made it much worse okay i am not a defender of the earlier system we have been fighting against the earlier system also for the last 23 yes. years yes but i do not want to leave this impression that removal of the electoral bond scheme will make the system worse than it was yesterday okay That's it will be better than yesterday but still very bad Okay, so, you the know, other, so the other correction I want to offer is 
that it is not only uneven playing field it is also denial of the citizens right to information citizens right to know yes where do political parties and i think that is something from. that the court has also highlighted today uh, that's I've... what I, no no that's what i am saying sunil said that the primary ground is uneven playing field i am adding to that there are two grounds yes. uneven playing field and denying the citizens right to information both are equally important right uh last word to you uh, mohammed i mean you've been with us throughout our coverage of this of this verdict uh, you know you represent the election commission of india formerly you were with them um you know what what's been said by the petitioner and in a certain sense what's been pointed out by sunil the analysis of this is very interesting uh, that you know it it's not like the previous system was great either but the electoral bonds made it worse how do you respond to that and how do you see this judgment now potentially impacting transparency in terms of political funding going forward into poll season from day one the election commission want to stop the lack many practices in the election commission at the time of the elections in the country and this was directly related they are party were thinking that the money and the vote, voting both are related but always the uh, we can say the election commission has always uh, interested the free and fair poll and that's why for the transparency the political parties may register under the 21a of the rti rti act 1951 so election commission is always giving the free and fair hands to the all parties and all people of india so but this is also good as uh, 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 today we have received the verdict from the supreme court of india and very thankful to and uh, the election commission is also uh, now safe is this point of view everything is clear earlier they were also yes. uh, making everything clear but this one of the eye of the public so after the supreme court uh, decision yeah, everything is very clear means uh, yes. they are going to uh, as bi is going to submit the within 6 week and before that they are this is going to, uh, submitted by the election commission of india and all the will be come on the website like okay. the digital world everything you can see free and yes. fair now nobody can say the election commission is going any hide from anything from the public or the party or the public and so that's why it is very clear okay. i'm very thankful to cji i'm very thankful to election commission of india and the public of india right. and you thank you very much for the participating for this okay. debate thank okay. you very much we'll take that we'll take that as closing comments uh, very interesting because you know like sunil has been pointing out that it's not just that the scheme has been stopped immediately that of course has happened but retrospectively all of the donations that have been received under the electoral bond scheme will be made public by the state bank of india and put up on the election commission website and those uh, individuals who may have uh, utilized the electoral bond scheme uh, to make political donations in the last 15 days can in fact get a refund if they are uh, if they desire to so that's uh, also very interesting to note that it's essentially gone a step further not just deemed it arbitrary and unconstitutional but retrospectively all of those details under the scheme will have to be made public thank you gentlemen very much for joining us on the broadcast